Hello and welcome to my solution video to spicy question number 6. We're going to start off by looking at the final two bearings given in the question, A from D and D from A. Let's draw on two points for A and D. If we connect them up and then add in some north lines, we can label the bearings. So A from D is this bearing here and we're told that's 5x minus 10 and D from A is this bearing here and we're told that's 2x plus 5. Now we're also going to find this pink angle in here. This angle is co-interior with the green angle, since the two north lines are parallel, so those angles must add up to 180 degrees. So to find the pink one we can do 180, take away the green one. If you do 180, take away 2x plus 5, you get 175, take away 2x. So that's the value of the pink angle. Now the pink angle plus the blue angle must go together to make 360. So if we write 5x minus 10 plus the pink angle 175 minus 2x equals 360. We just have an equation to solve. If we simplify the left hand side we get 3x plus 165 and then if we take 165 away we get 3x equals 195 and divide by 3. x equals 65 degrees. Now that we know x is 65 degrees, we can work out all five of the bearings in the question. So b from a was x take away 5, so 65 take away 5, which is 60. c from b is 2 lots of 65 take 10, which is 120. d from c is 3 lots of 65, so 195. a from d is 5 lots of 65 take away 10, so 315. And d from a is 2 lots of 65 plus 5, which is 135. Using this information we can now draw a better picture of what's going on. So let's start with the points A and B, and we know the bearing of B from A is 60 degrees, so we can mark that on here. And now let's include the point C, and we know the bearing of C from B is 120. And then we'll also include point D, so we know the bearing of D from C is 195. And then let's also connect that back up to A, and the bearing of A from D is 315 degrees, so this one here. And finally, the bearing of D from A is 135. Now the bearing of D from A is this whole angle here in green. We know this is 135, but we've already got 60 there, so if we take 60 from 135, the angle on the inside here is 75 degrees. We can now find some more angles on the diagram. We'll use that property earlier that co-interior angles add up to 180 degrees. So if you look at the north lines from A and B, you can see that this angle here must be 120, since 120 plus 60 is 180. For exactly the same reason, this angle in here is 60. And if you look at the point B, we've got two angles around a point here and one left over. So this final angle here must also be 120, since all three of those angles need to add up to 360. We are told in the question that AB and BC are both 10 miles. So let's label on those lengths as 10. I'm now going to connect up the points A and C with a straight line like this. And notice that ABC, the triangle, must be an isosceles triangle since two of the lengths are 10. We have the top angle here at B, that's 120 degrees. If you subtract that from 180, you're left with 60. And if you half that, you find that both of the smaller angles in that triangle are 30 degrees. So let's mark on the one on the right. And we can mark on the one on the left, but this is already part of an angle which makes 75. So there must be 45 left over when we take off the 30. So there'll be 30 inside the triangle, but 45 outside in this second triangle here. Now if you look over at the point C, you can see we've got lots of angles there, 30, 60 and 195. If you add those together and take it off from 360, you'll find the other angle there, which is 75 degrees. Now our diagram is looking quite congested at the minute, so I'm going to remove some of the information we no longer need, some of the north lines and some of the angles on the outside. Now if you look at the bottom triangle here, ACD, we've got one angle missing, but if you add 75 and 45 and take this from 180, you'll find this bottom angle is 60 degrees. Now let's remember what we're trying to find out in the question. We were asked to find the exact distance in miles from town C to town D. So we need the length of the line from C to D. What I'm going to do next is draw a vertical line straight down from B until I hit the line AC. I'm going to label the point where the intersect is P. Now let's take a closer look at the triangle ABP. We know the angle here is 30 degrees, and we know the hypotenuse is 10. If we label this triangle, we would put the hypotenuse as 10, BP is the opposite, and AP is the adjacent. We can now use trigonometry to write down cos 30 equals the adjacent, which is A, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 10. If we then multiply both sides by 10, we get the adjacent equals 10 times cos 30, 
which is 10 times square root 3 over 2, which is 10 root 3 over 2, which simplifies to 5 root 3. So we now know the length from A to P is 5 root 3. But if you look at the diagram, the length from A to P must be half of the length from A to C, since ABC is an isosceles triangle. So from A to C will be two lots of 5 root 3, which is 10 root 3. So we now have this triangle here. We can use the sine rule to find the length of CD. So if we write CD over sine 45 equals 10 root 3 over sine 60. We're going to leave the left-hand side of this alone for a moment, and on the right-hand side we're going to change the sine 60 into square root 3 over 2. If you divide by square root 3 over 2, that's the same as timesing by 2 over square root 3. The square root 3s here will cancel out, so you're just left with 10 times 2, which is 20. We can now multiply both sides of this equation by sine 45, so you get CD equals 20 times sine 45, and sine 45 is square root 2 over 2. So 20 times square root 2 over 2. This will give you CD equals 10 root 2, and that's the answer to the question. 10 root 2 miles. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the video I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.